All right, gamers, I've got something great for you today. This is the mostly finished prototype FAMAR, a FAMAS derivative AR-15. I don't have the top handguard finished yet. My variant has a few quirks I need to work out. The whole top assembly is just not done yet. I just finished working out the safety and the trigger group. This little paddle right here blocks your trigger when it's on safe. Push it to this side, push it to the other side, it can go either way. It's a little bit stiff because it's brand new. Uh, this goes semi-auto, safe, semi-auto. No full auto, unfortunately. I've got a 20-inch FN chrome-lined hammer forge barrel on here just because I had it laying around. The real Hamas uses an 18.2, 19.2, no? Which is a nice round number in metric. I don't have the gas block on it yet. I'm still waiting for my low pro to arrive in the mail. But aside from missing some of the covers, some of the bolts aren't trimmed down. I don't have the sizes quite figured out yet. This is a functioning firearm. So you will get some footage of the shooting today. Before we get into the fun stuff, let's disclose what the number one advantage to this is over an AR-15. I'm still going to prefer the AR for reasons, but this is a 14.7 with a carbine stock. This is just a wee bit longer than an M4 carbine. And this is the 20 inch, albeit with no muzzle device. So add an inch for an actual muzzle device, but this is uh, impressive. Now my carbine here has a launcher on it, but the FAMAS isn't too much more chunky than my AR-15 right here. And it's also a 5.56 caliber platform that also just so happens to take the same magazines. Very convenient. Now, the FAMAR also uses a standard mil-spec AR magazine catch. Right, let's go over some of the features that are going to be on the finished project, as opposed to my uh, monstrosity here. This front handguard comes off. Mine is zip-tied on because I don't have the M-Lock hardware required yet. The mail's been slow. Same with the rear handguard here, in lock. I'm going to make an F1 style you can replace this with. You can use it without the front handguard. You can put modern M lock attachments on this. This cheek piece right here covers up a mil spec AR receiver. The back end of this is all printed. The butt plate here has sling loops on either side. I haven't made the front sling loops yet. I'll figure that out. And then on top is the charging handle, which rides the standard AR-15 Picatinny rail on top of it. This one's brand new and I didn't oil it or anything, so it's a bit loud. It also doesn't go back all the way because I have this uh, 22LR conversion bolt. It will take a standard AR-15 bolt carrier group. It is not in here because I'm going to be test firing it with this 22LR conversion kit later. Manual of arms, we have our standard AR-15 magazine kit. This one's a bit stiff, I might open it up with a file. And then this hole right here conceals an AR-15 bolt release, which I do not have installed yet. The trigger right here is just this transfer bar. You can actually see it here where this, this triangular reinforcement because the trigger sear itself was actually bending. Charging handle on top is ambidextrous. I'm making a flat top version with the charging handle on the side because this cantilever Picatinny rail riser here should actually be out backwards over this to make this optic nice and close to me. You can go ahead and mirror that to the other side when I make the left-handed version. It's got a seam right here in the middle because this is uh, so long I had to make it two parts. And I can actually, well, this one's so stiff, I can take that apart right there. I haven't soldered iron welded that. It just returns forward under the force of the bolt. And the optic is keeping it from sliding off the front of the rail. However, the front hand guard, when it's printed, will also prevent that. I've got this nifty little grip compartment on the bottom. It's still way too tight. It takes me a couple of seconds to pry that open. And then on this side, I've not installed the bolts. I haven't drafted the front cover, but as is, this is a functioning rifle. With this uh, flat top one I'm going to make, this top hand guard piece, there's going to be a front and back section because it's too long to print at once. So I'm just going to solder iron weld it together. And then my cheap 
Picatinny riser here. I'll release some dimensions for this so you guys can find one. It just gets turned around backwards and it becomes the top cover. So I have a low pro charging handle on the side here. And I did also draft some iron sights that are lower profile and will fit this. Will look very nice. I don't have, uh, I've got quarter inch ring bolty tin pins in here because I don't have the bolts yet either. I need to make myself a little hardware store trick. Triggers a little bit, as you would expect from a 3D printed bullpup. However, there's a separate spring in the front that helps this trigger return. And then this exposed right here is actually the uh, piece of three mil, is it? Steel rod I have in here between the two. It can be adjusted in length to find your correct trigger tension, as well as the fire control group can be lightly modified with a file. Don't go crazy with it. For overall length, I'm using a three and a half inch AR-15 buffer, and I did have to add roughly an inch of length on this part. So with an 18 inch barrel as opposed to a 19 like the real Vamos, you get about the same overall length. This added length of pull I actually find a little bit convenient because I find my hand wanting to come off the end and I love this little finger stop on the end. But actually not using my left-handed bolt carrier, if I keep my face off of the cheek rest like I should be and come back here, kind of like on a Steyr AUG, if you pull it a little bit further forward, you can actually fire it on your offhand without eating brass. They'll teach you that in the uh, Steyr AUG proprietary course. Uh, James Reeves at TSB has a great video on this technique, but I'm probably going to be doing this a lot. I have very expensive teeth I've spent a lot of money on, so I will uh, let you guys know how this goes. But until I get my left ejecting AR upper, I think this will be it for me. All right, so I've got my 22LR magazine here. The Pomar takes a standard AR-15 magazine. However, since the magazine well is longer than an AR-15, it will not take those nice polymer Magpul magazines. My dual bullet box here is rated for 22LR. Something's beeping. I'm getting hit with little pieces of spall coming back, so that's not very pleasant. But overall, I'm getting used to how spongy and shitty the trigger is. My bolt did lock back, so my charging handle doesn't latch here. It's just sort of wiggle between the two. If I take my magazine out, it will return. My trigger's not resetting because I need to mess with my trigger spring. I can actually stick my finger back here and force it. It's because I have this open on the bottom for emergency access. I'll make a version that's open on the bottom, one that's not. But uh, overall, I'm pretty impressed with the charging handle functions. Because once again, it's just riding this ticket to me. And I thought I was going to have more issues with that. Okay, it's not that the trigger didn't reset. It's that I didn't pull it all the way because it's extra long and creepy. It'll take some getting used to, I can't really explain it, but I'm pulling it. There's where it would go on an AR-15, like a regular. And then it's got a little spongy, a little springy bit, maybe five millimeters of travel. And then it fires all the way back. So, I actually caused the malfunction there just by not pulling the trigger all the way, and I thought I had something wrong, but the trigger is just kind of heavy and spongy. I may do some tuning on that front return spring. Overall though, I have a functioning facsimile of a Cold War rifle that looks absolutely ridiculous. This is my Weaver Quick Point off of my AR. I'm going to finish that low pro top handguard with the low pro iron sights. I'm going to release this with a few tweaks or as is, depending on how today goes, on the 1st. Happy New Year. Enjoy 2023 with your uh, Cold War era meme rifle. There's a nylon 3D printable AUG coming out that I heard of about the same time I started this. 
and then I've seen somebody talking about a 3D printable infield bullpup or an L85 50-50 on that. So it's pretty impressive that three people just woke up one day not knowing of the other projects and decided I'm going to 3D print a Cold War bullpup and stick a bunch of AR-15 parts into it. And that's what I love about this community. Now, aside from my little section of the community, you guys, I've set up my subscribe star. You guys can fund my mad science. You guys can get early access to my mad science here. But this one is going to be releasing tomorrow 100% can still give me the money. I'm not going to tell you no, but this is tomorrow free. Happy New Year.